Howdy y'all and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about elemental defenses. So first off, what are elemental defenses? Well, they appear under the health of items usually, and uh, almost every item has some sort of elemental defenses. As you can see, pandemonium has negative 200 in every elemental defense. Uh, so I guess the prudent question after realizing that is, well, do elemental defenses matter? From the relevant class building mantra, you might be led to assume, well, no, they don't matter. But today I'm going to try to explain to you in what situations they do matter and which, what situations they don't matter. So, uh, first off, let's talk about negative elemental defenses on the player. So as you can see in the footage uh, that I'm showing you now, uh, I'm wearing second wind and I uh, intentionally took an eye meteor uh, from the eye. And as you can see, I took about 6,000 damage from just one eye meteor, and I have, uh, like, 79 defense with the build that I'm using. Uh, so how am I taking that much damage when the eye meteors usually only do, like, 200 damage? What, uh, not, sorry, not 200, like, 2,000 damage. Well, the answer lies in elemental defenses. Uh, my build, as you can see, has pretty high negative elemental defenses due to the fact that I'm wearing second wind. And uh, what happens with negative elemental defenses on the player is that they get multiplied by the spell multiplier. So uh, the eye meteor, for instance, that I took had an 800% spell multiplier, meaning that I took uh, massive amounts of damage. And what's crazy about that is that negative elemental defenses ignore your defense so you're taking the full damage no matter how much defense you have i would take the same damage regardless of if i had 150 defense however if i decide to wear some armor with less elemental defenses uh like if i switch to ornate which is used in wfa and wf and stuff as a thunder patch item as you can see, the meteor damage goes way down. I think I only took like 2,000 or 3,000 meteor damage from the eye. Uh, so as you can see, in certain situations, elemental defenses can have a huge effect on the amount of damage that you take from mobs. But I guess past that, let's talk about mob uh, elemental defenses. So how can uh, mob elemental defenses affect your damage? Well, as you can see in the clip uh, that I'm showing, uh, with Peaceful Rest, I'm doing a pretty significant amount of damage, like 8k to 12k meteors uh, average with uh, Peaceful Rest. But when I switch to Nepta Floodbringer, which actually I think has a higher damage in the build that I'm using, I'm doing no damage to the eye. I'm doing a little bit of neutral damage, and I'm doing burning ground damage, but my actual meteor itself is doing zero water damage to the eye. And uh, the reason behind that is because the eye has an, a water elemental defense, and Nepta Floodbringer is a super fast weapon. Yes, your, the weapon, the attack speed of the weapon that you're holding affects the uh, elemental how, how bad you get walled by elemental defenses. So a faster attack speed weapon will get walled more than a lower attack speed weapon. That's because um, when, when mob elemental defenses are factored, it doesn't consider the attack speed of your weapon, it just takes the base damage, not considering your attack speed multiplier, and then just uh, puts that against the elemental defenses that the mob has, purely additively. Um, all, all elemental defenses are purely additive. Uh, but it, it'll it'll uh, go it against do it against the elemental defense of the mob, and thus super fast weapons are at a very bad disadvantage when it comes to elemental defenses, and they usually do very low damage. However, what's good is that uh, your damage IDs can actually increase your damage uh, no matter if you are getting walled. So as you can see in the footage, I go from doing zero damage to doing 26k meteors because I was curse stacking. So your spell damage, your water damage, whatever, whatever damage is, you know, your spells are affected by will scale with the, uh, your, your damage IDs. 
you know, so, so you're not stuck just doing zero damage, but you might want to think about your options when a, play, a mob has some uh, defense at the wall, whatever damage that you're doing. Uh, but I guess uh, that kind of wraps up the important parts of this video, but uh, a few other things to note. Um, the, the, the aspects of elemental defenses that don't really matter that much is positive player elemental defenses mobs mostly do neutral damage actually so your positive elemental defenses usually won't uh wall that much from mobs uh, unless you have something like cybel cybel does a lot of elemental damage and stuff but most mobs don't most mobs just do neutral damage uh, but if you do have those it'll calculate it before the spell mo spell modifier and you will take a decent amount less damage depending on the mob uh, mob weaknesses also don't really matter as much as uh, mob defenses, so just keep that in mind. Uh, although faster weapons can exploit uh, mob weaknesses more than so, uh, slow weapons can. So if you're using a super slow weapon of uh, a weapon a mob is equal uh, is uh, weak to, it's not going to be very efficient. Um, but the point of this video is kind of to show that like. With tank builds, if you're going to be con consistently taking damage from mobs, you might want to have pretty decent elemental defenses, because otherwise you're going to be taking damage that it ignores your defense. But if you're using like a perfect play build, or you're going against a mob that doesn't have a high spell modifier or something like that, then you don't really need to worry that much, to be honest. Well, I hope this video helped you, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Goodbye.